Good morning everyone. Today, we will be discussing animal diversity I and the different phyla of invertebrates. We will be focusing on the morphology and characteristics of various species of earthworms, and their relevance to agriculture. To explore this exciting topic, we will be using animated slides. So, let's get started. The earthworm is a member of the phylum Annelida and a subclass of the Oligocata. It has both male and female reproductive systems and is bilaterally symmetric with an anterior and posterior end. Its body is tubular and is segmented, each segment having setae that enable the earthworm to move and burrow through the soil. Additionally, the earthworm has a muscular system, a digestive system, and a circulatory system. It feeds on organic matter in the soil and plays an important role in soil aeration and fertilization. Earthworms are an important example of invertebrates, animals without a backbone. Across the world, these creatures can be found in soil of varying climates, and can often be seen wriggling on the surface after a rainstorm or burrowing through the earth. Not only are they visually interesting, but they are also beneficial for the health of the soil. Earthworms can help to aerate the soil, as well as enrich it, and can even speed up the process of decomposition. Earthworms are nocturnal animals found in gardens. They create burrows by boring and swallowing the soil, and remain hidden within them during the day. Evidence of their presence can be seen in their worm castings, fecal deposits in the soil. Agricultural teams are well aware of the vital role earthworms play in keeping the soil healthy. Earthworms enable the soil to be turned over, which increases the levels of air and water available to the plant's root systems. Moreover, they can offer protection to the roots, warding off pests and diseases. Indian species such as Ferratima, Lumbricus, and Megascolex, which have been around since ancient times, are very beneficial to farmers. With their help, the fertility of farmland can be improved and the production of a healthy crop of plants can be sustained. Earthworms are incredibly beneficial to our planet. Andrada grandis from South India is the longest earthworm species in India, reaching up to 6 feet in length. It has a unique body structure which not only looks fascinating, but it also aerates and fertilizes the soil, helping to nurture vegetation and sustain various ecosystems. We must make sure that we protect and preserve this species as it is key to maintaining the biodiversity of our planet. Two species of earthworms, Chaetogaster anandale and Megascolides australis, illustrate the great variety of the animal kingdom. Chaetogaster anandale is the smallest known species, measuring about 1 mm in length, whereas Megascolides australis can reach 3 meters in length. Ferratima posthuma stands out with its 100 to 120 segments which run along its cylindrical body. A dark mid-dorsal line, the dorsal blood vessel, runs along the longitudinal axis of the body. From this organism we can get a glimpse of the huge variety of animals that form the invertebrate phyla. This diagram demonstrates the various features of an earthworm. The prostomium, or frontal lobe, is visible at the head end of the earthworm. The peristomium is located around the mouth and the clitellum is found halfway down the length of the body. The female and male genital openings are found under the clitellum and are protected by it. The setae, which form a ring around the clitellum, assist the earthworm in movement. Additionally, the segments, anus, and dorsal blood vessel of the earthworm are demonstrated. Earthworms are important members of our natural ecosystems. They help create compost, aerate soil, and transport nutrients and minerals between layers of soil. Additionally, earthworms feed on organic matter, creating a nutrient-rich fertilizer for plants.
The invertebrate phylum has a body divided into three regions. Pre-clitellar, clitellar and post-clitellar. There is a single female genital pore located on the mid-ventral line of the 14th segment, and two male genital pores on the ventrolateral sides of the 18th segment. Additionally, the body has nephridiopores distributed across it and four pairs of spermathecal apertures between the 5th and 9th segments. Setae are small, chitinous appendages found in body segments of many invertebrates, barring the first, last, and clitellum in mature worms. They can be either protrusible or retractable and serve an essential role in locomotion. Their presence is essential to animal diversity and provide insight into how invertebrates move in their living space. Answer. Answer to this question is Megascolides australis. It is a species of Megascolesidae family and is found in some parts of Asia and Australia. This worm can grow up to 3 meters in length, being the longest earthworm currently known. An often overlooked inhabitant, the earthworm plays a vital role in the ecology. Its anatomy features segments that aid in burrowing, as the muscles and alimentary system transport essential nutrients and oxygen to the surface layers. Its slimy skin helps the movement of the soils and offers protection. Earthworms are impressive invertebrates with a critical purpose in our environment. The body wall of an earthworm is covered by a thin non-cellular cuticle with an epidermis, two muscle layers and a colomic epithelium underneath it. The two muscle layers are an outer circular muscle layer and an inner longitudinal muscle layer. This provides an overview of the anatomy of the earthworm. Colimates are one of the most diverse phyla of invertebrates featuring a body cavity called the coelom which is surrounded by two layers of specialized tissue, namely the outer parietal layer and the inner splanchnic layer. This provides an increased degree of mobility and a more intricate body plan. Additionally, colimates have three layers of mesoderm-derived tissue which are the somatic layer, which is responsible for movement. The visceral layer, which lines the organs and the epidermis, which is comprised of one layer of columnar epithelial cells with secretory gland cells. The invertebrate phylum is easily distinguishable due to its coelom, 
a cavity between the body wall and digestive tube filled with a fluid. This fluid creates a hydrostatic skeleton that provides an earthworm with shape and structure. This is only one example of the great variety of invertebrate phyla. Earthworms belong to the phylum Annelida and they are segmented worms. They have a digestive system which is specialized, having a one-way passage, aiding in efficient digestion. Organic matter on the surface is consumed by the earthworms and this matter is converted into nutrients which are taken in by the worms. The food then goes from the pharynx to the gizzard, where it is mixed with small stones and dirt for further digestion. It is then passed on to the intestine where it is digested and eventually excreted. An animal's digestive system is a complex system of organs and parts. Its purpose is to break food down, absorb nutrients in the body, and expel waste. Among invertebrates, the digestive system is typically a tube with several organs, including the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, crop, gizzard, and intestine. These organs work in combination to break down food, extract nutrients, and absorb them into the body, while also expelling waste. These processes are essential to the animal's proper functioning. The animal diversity of invertebrate phyla is impressive. From their terminal mouth to their muscular gizzard, there is complexity and purpose to their anatomy, exemplified in the gizzard adaptation that allows them to consume small particles of food and decaying leaves. This complex design is a testament to the great work of the natural world. Regarding animal diversity I, the stomach of an earthworm extends from the 9th to the 14th segments. The food of earthworm consists of decaying leaves and organic matter in the soil, and the calciferous glands in the stomach neutralize the humic acid. The intestine starts from the 15th segment and projects from the 26th segment, with a pair of short and conical intestinal cc. Ingestion of soil rich in organic matter marks the beginning of the digestion process for ferritima. The digestive tract of this invertebrate phylum is complex, featuring a typhlozole, an internal median fold of the dorsal wall of the intestine that enhances the area of absorption. Further digestion takes place via digestive enzymes that simplify and break down the ingested material with the resulting nutrients being absorbed through the intestinal walls to fuel metabolic activities. Answer. The answer to this question is, mesenteries. Ferritima, a fascinating creature, utilizes these structures to maintain its alimentary canal in place. This is only one of the many wonderful invertebrates that occupy our world.
From annelids to mollusks, there is a fantastic selection of invertebrates existing. Earthworm is an extraordinary creature that has developed to succeed in a range of environments. Its strong grinding mill enables it to process sustenance. This grinding mill is made out of four different pieces, the gizzard, the pharynx, the buccal chamber and the stomach. Each of them makes a critical contribution in helping the earthworm process, soak up supplements, and discard waste. The evolution of the animal kingdom has been profoundly influenced by the progress of the blood vascular system. The components of this system, blood vessels, capillaries, and hearts, facilitate the circulation of blood around the body. The heart pumps blood through the arteries and veins, supplying oxygen and nutrients to the body. Other essential components for survival are the gut, nerve cord, and body wall. Together, these systems provide the foundation for animal life. Examining animal diversity I, we see that blood glands are located in the fourth, fifth, and sixth segments of invertebrates. The blood cells have a phagocytic nature and hemoglobin is produced and dissolved in the plasma. Additionally, a dorsal artery and a ventral vessel transports the blood within the body. Gaining knowledge on the distinct processes of invertebrates can help us discover more information on evolution. Drawing your attention to the respiratory system of the earthworm, it is interesting to note that this creature does not possess any specialized respiratory structures. Instead, it relies on its moist body surface to exchange gases by diffusion. This remarkable adaptation gives insight into their evolutionary history. Slide focuses on types of pharyngeal nephridia in invertebrates. Nephridia appears in form of tubules that are arranged segmentally. These nephridia can be classified into three categories, septal nephridia, integumentary nephridia and pharyngeal nephridia. The nephridipores, which are present on the body surface, aids in the removal of wastes to the outside. Also, it opens into the buccal cavity and intestine, known as phrynx. Therefore, invertebrates have specialized excretory system comprising of these nephridia. Earthworms are remarkable creatures with essential functions for their environment. Of notable importance is their nephridia, divided into two main types. Open and closed, further broken down into enteronephric and exonephric varieties. 
Open nephridia contain nephrostomes, while closed nephridia do not. Nephridia are responsible for expelling urea, the chief nitrogenous excretory waste, from the body. Furthermore, enteronephric nephridia have a role in managing osmoregulation and homeostasis of water. All in all, nephridia are paramount in the lives of earthworms, regulating their vital bodily functions. The nervous system serves as the command center of our bodies, enabling us to acquire, analyze and react to stimulation. In many invertebrates like those studied in this unit, the nervous system consists of a nerve ring around the pharynx and a double ventral nerve cord, together with sensory organs situated in the front of the body which receive light, contact and chemical stimulation. This complex arrangement of neurons allows these creatures to interpret their surroundings and take the necessary action. Earthworms are incredibly important to ecosystems, contributing to soil fertility and nutrient cycling. They are hermaphroditic, containing both male and female reproductive organs. During the process of reproduction, they exchange sperm and gametes. Afterward, the female organs create the cocoon in which the fertilized eggs develop. Earthworms usually self-fertilize, though cross-fertilization is possible. An earthworm is a remarkable example of a hermaphroditic creature. On its 10th and 11th segments, two pairs of testes are present, as well as two pairs of seminal vesicles on its 11th and 12th segments. The vasa deferentia link these segments to the prostatic ducts, and the male genital pores are seated on the ventrolateral sides of the 18th segment. This sophisticated arrangement aids the earthworm in reproduction and gives a noteworthy example of an invertebrate phylum. This presentation covers animal diversity from the invertebrate phyla. We are going to look at two sets of accessory glands located in the 17th and 19th segments, four pairs of spermatheca in 6 to 9 segments, and a single pair of ovaries found in the 12th and 13th segments. These structures are noteworthy in terms of understanding the diversity of the invertebrate phyla. Oviducal funnels and oviducts of the 14th segment in invertebrate phyla are an important topic of focus. Oviducal funnels are positioned beneath the ovaries and proceed to oviducts. Oviducts join together and discharge to the exterior through a single median female genital pore situated on the ventral side of the 14th segment. This characteristic is key for those studying invertebrate phyla. Fertilization is a vital part of reproduction in the animal kingdom, transferring genetic material from one generation to the next. It is a complex process, requiring the formation of a cocoon in many species followed by copulation. 
Cocoon formation involves the organism enfolding itself in a protective covering before emerging and mating with another of the same species. Copulation is necessary for the joining of two individuals to form a single identity, an essential step for the continuance of life. Fertilization is the process where egg cells are joined with male gametes. Cocoon formation is the process of forming a hard enclosure around the fertilized egg cells or larva to defend them. Copulation is the act of mating between two members of the same species, usually involving specific distinctive behaviors. These are the methods of reproduction found in the invertebrate phyla. Earthworms are a type of invertebrate that form part of the animal diversity. Unlike other animals, they are hermaphrodites possessing both male and female reproductive organs. During mating, two mature worms will lay close to each other and exchange packets of spermatozoa called spermatophores. Phyla of invertebrates have been extensively studied in recent studies of animal diversity. The mature sperm and egg cells, as well as the nutritive fluid, in a particular group of these invertebrates are produced by gland cells of the clitellum. Such fluid is then deposited in cocoons, where fertilization and development take place, and eventually deposited in moist soil. This process of development is a significant part of understanding animal diversity, allowing us to better comprehend the intricacy of the animal species. Earthworms are amazing creatures that form an integral part of the animal kingdom. Found all over the world in soil, these remarkable creatures are unique in their direct development. Reproduction is done by cocooning themselves, and a single cocoon can produce up to four earthworms in about three weeks, transforming the within from embryos, into fully formed earthworms. It is clear that earthworms play an integral part in sustainable agriculture. They create burrows in soil, making it porous and aerated, and are commonly used as bait in fishing. Furthermore, there is a process for enriching the fertility of soil with earthworms, called, vermicomposting, which is the key to maintaining soil health. In conclusion, it is evident that earthworms have great economic importance. Thank you for your attention.